continues with Jay Reynolds. Presented by Progressive Insurance. Progressive is proud to support veterans with its annual Keys to Progress vehicle giveaway program, now celebrating nine years donating vehicles, helping veterans in need. Learn more at keystoprogress.com. We're taking you, as always, to Key J and Max, 6 o'clock Eastern Time. Guests are on the Goodyear hotline. You're part of the conversation on the Dr. Pepper Twitter feed. Well, the book is officially closed on Odell Beckham's two and a half seasons in Cleveland. He goes unclaimed, clears waivers Tuesday. That means he's now a free agent. Any team able to sign him at this point. But ESPN analyst Dan Orlovsky says it's not someone you bring in and change your entire playbook for. I don't think he's a scheme changer. I think he can be an impactful piece. Um, I, there's this saying in football, specifically quarterback wide receiver wise. Be where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there. Don't fool the quarterback. And I think that was part of the, the issue in Cleveland was a little bit of freedom when it came to his route running. Mm. Now, some, some offenses promote that. Some offenses don't. And I think with Odell, he can still yeah. be a top 15, top 20 receiver if he goes to the place that allows that in his game. Mina mentioned the Patriots. I completely agree. The only caveat would be is... They're a place where you, you yeah, better be where yeah, you're supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, Kansas City make more sense. Right. Than the, way the thing I do like about New England is that's a scheme that is dependent or built upon, I'm going to build it around a certain guy, right? In this play, I want you to be here. The other team I would throw out, and it is the freedom aspect, is the Green Bay Packers. I think those are the two most likely teams in the best situations for OBJ. Hey. Dan Orlovsky, we heard the Patriots part of that discussion. They'll be hosting the Browns on Sunday, but Cleveland may be without running back Nick Chubb. He's been placed on the COVID list after testing positive. Is possible for him to play with a pair of negative tests. Sports Center all night, ESPN Radio. Now for the best of what we heard on Tuesday, we bring in Mark Robbins and say hello. Hello there, Jay. Here we go. The top five plays of the day. Number five. It's time for some midweek action. And the Fighting Bobcats of Ohio U had some long-distance fight in them against Eastern Michigan, as described by Matt Sheck on ESPN2. Ohio 27-20, and Roark going deep, finds his man, over the shoulder catch, and off to the races is Cameron Oda for the touchdown. 66 yards for the score, the Bobcats add to their lead. Number four. The Ohio State Buckeyes trailed at home late against Akron in their season opener. But it turns out the Buckeyes had the key to unlock victory, as described by Paul Keels on Learfield. Hard to the right side looking inbound. Gets it, Branham, top of the key. Dumps it to Zed Key up to the hoop. Plays in at the buzzer. Zed Key right at the rim. Gives Ohio State a game winner at point blank range. And it's 67 66 on the scoreboard. Number three. On the ice, it's a meteorologist dream matchup. Overtime between the Hurricanes and Lightning. A 99-9 the fan. Now Nietzsche's has some room. He's backing off Hedman. Skates away from Galore. Now crisscrosses with Ajo. Pulls up on Hedman. Snaps to score! Nietzsche does it again to Tampa! Carolina, this one will count. 2-1. Number two. Shining on Broadway, the college hoops opener, Duke's Wendell Moore. Here's Mark Chestershire on ESPN Radio. Duke the other way, Bancaro. Skips it over to the right side. This is Keels for three. This oh, you think they're at home? Wendell Moore. Wow. He came from Brooklyn. He took that. He was a long way out. My goodness. He fell out of the sky on that two. And the number one play of the day. And finally, in Wichita, they don't call them the Shockers for nothing. Listen to this from ESPN+. Plus. And I call a timeout. It's going to be at the end to make the decision. A logo three. Oh, my goodness. 1.6 left. Wichita State with the win on that logo three-pointer. Top rank Gonzaga gets a 34-point win. Number two, UCLA with 13 three-pointers in the 37-point route of Cal State Bakersfield. As for the best team in the nation, 
ESPN's Jay Billis. UCLA is the best team. I think UCLA is the best team. They've got everybody back, uh, and and they're healthy this year. And then they brought in Peyton Watson, uh, who's a McDonald's All-American, long, athletic, great defender. And then they also brought in Miles Johnson, a transfer, uh, who's from California, transfer from Rutgers, uh, uh, an engineering major, big-time shot blocker, rim protector. So UCLA is better, uh, significantly better than their Final Four team of last year. College basketball now underway. College football coming down the stretch. The latest top four released by the committee. Georgia, Alabama, Oregon, Ohio State in the playoff spots. Cincinnati up a spot, but they're still at number five. ESPN's Trevor Maddich. Because Michigan State picked up that loss, there will only be one Big Ten team in the playoff. And so if Cincinnati wins without style points, all they'll need is for basically two things to happen. That is for the SEC to only get one team in. That means Georgia needs to have a convincing win in the SEC championship game. And Oregon needs to lose a game. And since they play Utah twice, that's not implausible. If those things happen, then even if the Big 12 champ jumps Cincinnati, okay. Cincinnati's in if they win out. That was going to be my, my next question. I guess I'm all out of questions. If Oklahoma wins out, I guess Cincinnati still has an avenue in there, but a couple things do have to happen. In. Well, we've talked about Cincinnati not getting a lot of style points the last three weeks. Now they don't need them. Michigan State, meanwhile, drops behind Michigan in the latest rankings as well. He is starting his 42nd and final year trying to take it all in. Certainly felt it on Tuesday. You'll hear him next at ESPN Radio. Wednesday, we're reacting to college basketball's opening night at MSG as Coach K's final season starts with his final game at the Garden. Plus, the latest from the NBA. That's Wednesday morning. Keyshawn, J. Will and Max on ESPN Radio. The top headlines are next on Sports Center All Night. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit porky, and you may even have type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Call term providers. Speak with Big Lou at 800-511-3535. Big Lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes, are overweight, or have high blood pressure. Term providers help thousands of people like you who think they can't afford term life insurance. To buy a million dollars of affordable term life for you, all you need to do is call Big Lou at 800-511-3535. Lou will make sure the scales are tipped in your favor. Call 800-511-3535. Big Lou will answer your call and work to fit you into a term life policy that you can afford. Remember, Big Lou's like you. He's on meds, too. Call 800-511-3535. 800-511-3535. Mornings with DiPietro and Rothenberg. It's amazing how fickle the sports fan and the NFL fan is. Last week, Joe Judge, how could you have any confidence in this guy? This week, you're like, you know, you can say a lot of things about Joe Judge, but they come to play for this guy. The defense played really well in that game. Did Joe Judge have a good game coaching-wise? No, he didn't. But I wouldn't spend all the day talking about how the team showed up for Joe Judge. I think it's more of a testament to what they have in that locker room with leadership. DiPietro and Rothenberg. Weekday mornings from 5 to 8 a.m. on 98.7 ES. ESPN.